I am Bono Ansley, an active real estate agent and founder of Ansley Real Estate, Christie's International, an award-winning Atlanta-based real estate broker that did over $3 billion in sales last year. And I'm Chris Tuff, one of the first advertisers to work directly with Mark Zuckerberg in 2006. I've since gone on to be the best-selling author of The Millennial Whisper and Save Your Asks. And, and this, this is Brokering, Brokering Billions. Billions. This podcast is about uncovering the hustle, perseverance, mindset, and tricks that are used by the top real estate agents in the country to help you take your business to the next level. In today's episode, this is an exciting one for me because after almost what three years of working on his book, Bono's Brokering Billions will be released to the public. They will be delivered to the thousands of people that have pre ordered. And we're going to cover a little bit about what went down at the Christie's International Real Estate Conference down in the Caymans, as well as talk about a little bit about what's to come next after publishing this book. So stay tuned, everyone. This is a fun one. There it is. Here we go. There it is. Where are we, Bono? Where we are, are we? We are in Atlanta, Georgia, fresh, freshly back from the Cayman Islands. We've been down there with our 140 affiliates for Christie's International Real Estate. God, we met some of the greatest, smartest folks in the business. We collaborated, we shared ideas, and we are all in the Christie's Network, so excited for the future for 2023 and beyond. I, I mean, one thing I have to say, Bono, is I was blown away at how not only put together the event was, because you kind of expect that with Christie's, but the people there were absolute, all the owners were absolutely amazing. And I mean, I now, it's funny because I, I texted Bono this morning. And I was like, hey, we got to do a podcast ASAP because I'm coming in hot after getting back last night because I just want, I see this need for what we're doing and what you're doing. And uh, I mean, it's go time. And I mean, tomorrow's a pretty exciting day, Bono. I can't believe it. So guys, uh, tomorrow the book gets um, actually released, right? So, you know, the people that have pre-ordered them and there's been a lot of them, uh, it'll be in your mailboxes. And so we're going to talk about Brokering Billions, the book today, what to expect. I hope everybody's got one on order, hopefully be in your mailboxes tomorrow or the next day. Um, but there's just a lot of great stuff in here. And I'm not just saying that because it's my book, but, you know, when we're talking to all these agents, across the world, um, they're really picking up stuff from this. And I think it's going to help people achieve what they want to achieve. And that's the whole reason why we're doing this. The whole reason why we're getting up here and doing this podcast, the whole reason why I spent hours and years, three years, right? Do, yeah. Doing this book. And I'm super psyched that people are liking it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, listen, we, we got to backtrack a little bit because this thing, it was number three on the Wall Street Journal bestseller list for the ebook, which it was what right behind Prince Harry. And like, so, I mean, it's ridiculous, right? I mean, it's already sold tens of maybe even hundreds of thousands of ebook copies. Like, I had no idea how big this real estate space until I started to see your numbers and the success that this was having. I was like, holy cow, think about what's going to happen when people actually get this in their mailboxes. And we saw it at the Christie's event, obviously, right? It was just so amazing to watch these owners walking around with the the Bible, right? Right. Um, yeah. It so cool. it was really cool. So I, I, I want to go back, right? So let, let's go back to the very beginning, Bono, uh, from when you, what was the epiphany for you to even write this? And when did that happen? I mean, this has been a long process, right? Well, I've been writing this book. I started with the blogs. People love the blogs. That was really real in the, in the blogs. Um, and 
uh, really vulnerable in the in the blogs and people wanted more. So I started writing the book through COVID. And then I had this weird thing happen. Uh, over a year ago, I choked on a piece of steak. I'm laughing about it now, but I sure wasn't laughing uh, the night that it happened. I was at Bones Restaurant, having a great time, drinking, talking to friends, and a piece of steak got clogged in my air, air tube. And um, guys, I was moments away from dying. And uh, they were doing the Heimlich. It wasn't working. Finally, somebody came in and broke a rib on my right side. And the steak got, you know, un unlodged in my mouth and came out. And I started to breathe again. And I was like, oh, wow. I mean, that just happened. And the next thing I'm like, God, I want to do things different. Uh, uh, you know, what's my legacy? So your, your life actually like blinked before your eyes. It was like in slow motion. I mean, I was sitting there getting the Heimlich, looking at my family. There was nothing that I could do in that situation. I was completely useless. And my my life really flashed, you know, in front of me. And I, and, and I, after that moment, I'm like, God, what, what, what am I leaving? I'm okay. I'm, 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 I work hard, you know, I sell a lot of houses, but, but, but what else? And I kind of said, God, I gotta, I gotta finish this book. I want to try to help people. Um, I want to give back. And I finished the book about six months after that incident and called you and said, we're doing a podcast yeah. and the rest has been kind of history. So that's kind of the, the story behind it. And, and here we are. Um, and, you know, I think people can lean, you know, learn a lot from this book. So I'm looking here at the, the, the different stuff that we talk about. I mean, right away, you know, we talk about the agent of the future and what that means and what that looks like, right? We put some insight into that. We talk about the other billion dollar brokers who agreed to help with the book. We talk about all the people that the, the, the 10 or 15 folks that we interviewed for content. So it's not just my stuff. It's, it's a bunch of other folks that broker a lot of houses and, and how they do it. And that's all here in the book. Mm. Um, okay. So I, I want to ask you a question. Yeah. If, 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 if listeners were to pick one chapter in your mind, what chapter would that be? I would say that's chapter four, cultivating the billion dollar habits and hobbies to help you consistently grow. Okay, and let's go back to that quote that um, you always talk about how you do anything is how you do everything, something like that, right? Yeah. Is that, is that well, t t take people through that chapter specifically. Like, well, what that's are those in there. Habits? I mean, look. What are those habits? First of all, a lot of agents start out as good agents. God, most agents are good agents. And then there's the group ahead of that that are great agents. This book is for people that want to be remarkable. This are, this, the, these are for, for the folks that want to do everything right. And going back to that quote, it's, it's how you leave your voicemails. It's how you send your print. It's how you send your print that's different than everybody else. Maybe it's not a just listed or just sold. Maybe you send something that's completely different when you send it out um, with stats or a quote or, 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 or something different that di differentiates you from the thousands of other postcards people get. Um, it's how you take them in your car and how it's clean and how you open the door for them and there's fresh water and there's a pack of information relative to the market you're going to look at. It's how you do, you know, anything is how you do everything. And and it also goes into creating these habits to make sure that what you're doing is on par with where you want to go, right? Mm -hmm. If you want to go from a 10 million to a 20 million or whatever that number is, um, it kind of puts you in a mindset on actually how to really do that, right? So that's a lot about chapter four. Um, and I think that that is a, is a really, really, really good chapter. I mean, I think all these chapters are great. Um, chapter six. I mean, I love rounding out your cast. Delegate, um, delegation. We talk right? about delegation, how to how to use your time during the day relative to what you're actually really, really, really good at, and how you delegate all the things um, that you're not. Just like what Mo Bunnell said in our last podcast, you know, if you're the center of the football team, you're probably one of the biggest on the field. And you're not the one that's catching the ball. You're not the one throwing the ball. You've got a specific task, and that's 
block for your quarterback and get the ball to your quarterback, right? So who's on your team that is in the right role to let you perform at 110% for the role that you're specifically doing? Or maybe right? they're not on the team at all, right? I mean, one thing that I, I had a lot of conversations with other Christie's owners around is this statistic that it's astounding, but 11% of employees are actually in jobs that match their personality. And that's according to Bloomberg, right? Mm -hmm. 11%, right? And so understanding where your strengths and weaknesses, but then, you know, more importantly, once you find those, how are you rounding out and delegating accordingly to other people whose strengths are your weaknesses? And I've never seen anyone do it quite like you do it, but not well, right. Like, I mean, yeah. And, and that's a lot of, the things in the chapter. And then we also talk about, you know, um, having multipliers to increase your business, because once you go through all of your Rolodex and your family's Rolodex and your peers, you know, that probably represents upwards of 20 to $25 million that's capped a year that's relative to your sphere. So to sell more than that, you've got to do things that get you out of your sphere and, and you've got to use multipliers and raging fans of yours to be able to do that. And multipliers can come from anybody from um, the guy that cuts your hair or the accountant or the uh, divorce lawyer. I mean, there's a thousand of them. And if they're on your team, they can help you get past and break through what you would do if you were just selling to your peer group. That's, I mean, it's it's such an important thing that I, I feel like a lot of agents don't necessarily take heed on. And I mean, one theme as I've now immersed myself in your industry, a lot of agents are overwhelmed, right? You, you get these agents that they feel like they've got to do you know, everything from their Instagram posts to, you know, obviously they're showing houses, they're, 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 tr and then they're returning they're, phone calls, they're returning, they're returning calls. text, and then they have to do the, the back office stuff. And it's like, there's no time left in the day. Well, right? in the book, we call that, you know, you're working on the urgency side of the business and there is an urgent side of the business. Don't get me wrong, but you've got to set time for, you know, the important side and that's setting time for growth and planning and creating these other habits and stuff like that so you can break through um, and do more volume than, than you did the year before right and so we talk so much about that in here so one one of the uh the themes that i'm starting to i think see all around me with the most successful i guess entrepreneurs is that this this concept of the importance around you got to slow down to speed up Mm -hmm. And you look at market conditions as they lie now, right? And you look at the reaction that is happening, right? It's a lot of defense, right? And and so this is the time to step the, on the gas. Yeah. So yeah, so, everything happens in the curves, right? And in, in life, I go through my life story, and I've had a lot of different curves, right? In the bottom of the curve, I had a real estate development that came out in 08, not a great time. But that got me to start selling real estate instead of developing real estate, which has been a good thing, right? I had a house fire that made me move locations, maybe to a bigger market. So all these things happen in the curves and you got to put the foot down. And I think we're on a curve right now relative to the market. And it's how you use that, guys, just to jump in and double down on everything you're doing today. Yeah. I mean, and I mean, and so talk through a little bit. I mean, right now. Okay, the read time on this thing is 229 minutes. I don't know if you've ever seen that, but no. that, that's how long it will take someone to invest in reading this. But but no, I think you've done a great job of allowing people to choose, you know, if 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 certain things in the table of contents, people are good at, right? Already. And they're like, I don't need help there, but they can really just jump to one of these things that they can identify as being one of their weaknesses or areas of opportunity and just start making something happen, right? Totally. One of the most uh, things that excites me in this book is um, I talk about my ADD and my dyslexia, but I talk about it in a spirit of I'm fueled by it. And I have turned those two perceived liabilities into my greatest assets because I'm able to do a lot of different things at once. And I'm able to super hyper focus on things um, in which people kind of say, oh my God, little Timmy's got dyslexia. I don't know what to do. That's the greatest thing that's ever happened to little Timmy parents. 
you know, let him live through that and figure out the best way that he can use that to his advantage. And I talk a lot about that because I think parents need to hear a lot about that. So that's in the book too, because everybody's got something. You're either too tall, you're too short, you're, you know, born on the wrong side of the tracks. You were born with dyslexia. You know, there's a thousand different things that people can use as excuses. Try to figure out how you can use those as as, as advantages, and um, talk a lot about, or you know, read, you know, there's a lot of, of that in this book. Yeah, and I think even some of the stories, you know, one of my my favorite examples that you brought up in in the panel, uh, or I mean, in the fireside chat at Christie's, was just even the juxtaposition of some of the people you interviewed for education, right? Like uh, Spears, who what he graduated. In college life, at yeah. 14 or something right and then and then right you know then rob, you've got thomas. rob thomas who's the exact opposite dropped out of school in eighth grade at 14 right and they both do the same amount of volume so there's so much stuff to do guys we're going to leave it to y'all to read ask us any questions um chris and i are here to help and help your companies and 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 and, and help help you guys as agents. We've got some things coming out and um, stuff like that that'll help you guys. I'm excited about our real estate quiz, which is going to be really, really cool, which will drop here in the next few weeks that you guys can download and do um, to tell you what kind of real estate agent you are. And then depending on what real estate agent you are, what you should be focused on. So I think we've got a lot of great stuff coming out. I'm so thrilled that people are excited about this. Chris, thanks for all you've done. And um rock and roll yeah let's do this and i mean any listener out there one thing that we heard a lot from these christie's owners was that they're loving the podcast so please keep listening please please share it with the rest of your people in your uh, real estate network and you know let's let's see this all the way through because it's an exciting time man it's exciting awesome thank you guys broker and billions we're out